All right, guys, today we're talking about what makes a hype knife and why you shouldn't buy one. Let's talk about it. So basically the easiest way to sum it up is any knife whose objective value, so the value of what they're putting on it, doesn't equal or is less than the physical monetary value of it. So essentially kind of what I mean by this is there's an established value for knives and of course that established value factors in things like manufacturing, country of origin, um, the you know material values of the knife. And that's why I try to say the, the physical value of it because of course if you just look at a knife say that you know G10 is say you know like a dollar per pound or something you know and then you look at the knife steel and you say you know it's you know five or ten or twenty dollars per pound you know obviously no knife is ever going to be worth it because there's the heat treat the you know manufacturing all the tools that are required to make this thing plus the hardware plus the clips plus the different you know colors of any particular item so that when it comes down to it there's like a physical value that goes into it and usually there's a pretty established price for all of that and say you know I brought out my Spyderco paramilitary tube I think it's a really good example of a knife that is a bit hyped because this this in a stock or standard configuration would probably be you know close to 150 to 160 dollars right but uh, a specialized version like this you would expect to go for maybe 200 dollars but then this knife might actually end up selling for 250 dollars so objectively speaking there um you know, its physical price, let's say, is $200, but if it sells for $250, then that is what I would consider a hyped up price. Uh, and a hyped price generally happens or takes place when you have, it's, I guess, a simple economic principle of supply and demand, right? Say Spyderco makes, let's say, a thousand of these knives, but you have 5,000 people that want to buy this knife. Well, when the demand is higher than the supply, the person who is supplying it usually increases the price so that it lowers the demand or the, the demand ends up becoming relative to the supply. So, you know, this knife at $200, maybe 10,000 people will buy. This knife at $250, maybe 1,000 people will buy. So that's essentially how economics works with supply and demand. Now, obviously there is price gouging in different, uh, more complex economic um, theories and discussions, but those are for a later date. Anyways, yeah. I also brought out my custom Gavco because this is another knife that you could potentially consider a hype knife because objectively speaking, once again, you know, Nitro V as a steel, titanium as handles, uh, even Timascus as a blade clip doesn't necessarily make the knife worth a thousand dollars, right? It's just that there is a value and once again, a demand that outweighs the supply. This knife is one of one, right? There's never going to be another Gavco nurse that looks exactly Exactly like this so this is a one-to-one -one, or one of one I should say um, blades that exist right so obviously even if there is you know 50 people that want this knife a reasonably low demand if there's only one knife there's still a very high supply or there's a very high demand to supply so anyways economics aside what is the problem with a hype knife now that we've finally defined within reason what one is so the primary problem with a hype knife is the fact that it does not offer an objective value that is higher than really what it is. You know, a, a knife, let's say that's made out of S30V, is only capable of certain performance. And so therefore, if you end up buying a knife for a high cost and it doesn't have great performance to it, then ultimately at some point, what are you paying for? You're paying for essentially a an objective or an idealistic uh, idea of owning that knife, right? You're paying for the fact that you own that. And that's essentially why things like expensive cars are so expensive and why people give them so much attention is there's a certain degree that you are paying just to have that, you know, type of vehicle in your life. It's not necessarily that it's, you know, objectively even worth, you know, let's say like $2 million. But uh, yeah, 
So what that ends up leading to, especially with a lot of newer knife people that don't quite understand, you know, why hype knives are bad, is that you get a knife that really does not perform that well, that you end up spending a lot of money on. And the reality is, say, and I've seen this before, there are REC or River's Edge cutlery versions so yeah, like I was saying, you know, ultimately a lot of people who aren't as familiar with the EDC world get into knives and they end up sp spending, say, like $400 on a paramilitary 2, that's ultra limited edition. And even with a very high end blade steel, you're still going to be missing out because there are plenty of knives that you can get for close to $400 that simply have better fit, finish, and performance. Um, maybe not in blade steel, strictly speaking, but in other ways, like obviously the ergonomics might end up being more hand filling. You might like the aesthetics of that knife more or something along those lines. So ultimately when it comes down to it, you know, like why is buying a hype knife bad? It's not entirely bad because you're still getting a pretty darn good knife. I would say most of the time, sometimes there are definitely deals that are worse than others, but at the same time too, you do need to be cautious for, you know, just how much hype are you spending i think with something like this knife i end up getting it for about 220 dollars so in my opinion the objective or physical value of this knife was probably about 200 bucks and so spending 20 dollars extra to say that i wanted this knife more than someone else isn't necessarily the end of the world especially because i wanted a blade with this blade steel and so for those reasons you know a spending a little bit extra for a hype knife isn't always the problem. It's when you spend, you know, multiple hundred dollars. And I think this is also true with other, you know, products, things, especially like sneakers, you know, is a thousand dollar pair of hype sneakers going to perform better than a 200 or even $150 pair of running sneakers or running shoes? Probably not. And so the reality is, you know, if you get into it knowing that you're paying a lot of money for hype, then maybe it's not the end of the world, but even still, I think it's a pretty tall order where it's like, you know, realistically speaking, you're paying so much for the privilege to own that item that that item really ceases to actually even be usable because you've spent so much money on it. So it is something to keep in mind and to you know try to balance when it comes to everyday carry uh, because unfortunately the hype culture has definitely infected many people in EDC life. And I think that might also be partly due to the fact that many people come to EDC or everyday carry or knives or things like that from places like you know, sneaker culture, shoe culture, um, from things like not or things like car, the car community. And while I certainly you know do like those communities myself, you know definitely there are some problems that they bring along. So, anyways, guys, definitely be cautious about reselling. And you know, if a knife has too much hype to it, never feel like you have to buy it or that you need to own it. Especially because, uh, or don't feel like you're going to try to get a knife because you want to, uh, you know, like flex on people and say like, oh yeah, I managed to pick up that rare limited edition or limited drop knife. And it's like, yeah, but in the end, was it really worth it? So anyways, guys, you know, that is kind of my end sentiment to hype knives and whether or not you should buy one. I think it's a bad idea unless you really, really, really want that knife, I suppose. <laughs> anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.